He who kneels before God can stand before anyone. He who kneels before God can stand before anyone. If you are looking for power, if you are looking for strength, if you are looking for courage, spend time on your knees before the Creator. Spend time on your knees before the Savior. Spend time on your knees before the God of the universe. And you will find strength and courage to stand before the people of the world. Or any conflict or, or any challenge that, that is arising in your life. You get an example of this, and there's numerous examples in the Old Testament. Here's one of my favorites in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All of, all of us, you know, we, if you were in the church, you learned this as a kid. We teach it to the kids upstairs. Let me just stress this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were kids. They were teenagers. And you know what? They, they were men who understood the power that comes from living a life on your knees. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. You see, Nebuchadnezzar said, you're going you're to deny your God and live. If not, I'm going to throw you in the fire. He says, if that's the case, right? They looked into Nebuchadnezzar's face and they said, if that is the case, notice, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. He said, God is able, right? We don't believe that, right? God is able. All things are possible with God. God is able to deliver us. Hey, how about when he lets you get close to the fire, though? How you doing? How you doing? I've watched people in the church, hallelujah, hooting, hollering, hallelujah. God can deliver us. What if he lets you get a little close to the fire? All of a sudden, I've seen a lot of people, their faith wilts. They melt like a candle. They run for the hills. Not these kids. I just want you to see this. What happens when you don't get what you want? What, what, what happens when, when God has a different plan for you? What happens when God wants to put you, God wants to strengthen you and toughen you up by allowing you to go through a tough time? What happens then? Here's three kids. You know, spiritual maturity has very little to do with age. I, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen people in their early 20s who are more mature than people who have walked with the Lord in their 70s, the people who have walked with the Lord for 50 years. I've seen that. I've seen people who are more committed to Christ and know Christ in a much greater way who, who are in their teens than people that have walked with the Lord for years. Notice their answer, verse 18. But if not, <laughs> but if not, God has another plan. And he did have another plan that day. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Get that, isn't that, that that's, that's, that's a, a verse for a lifetime, but if not, what if God don't do what you want him to do? What if God has an entirely different plan? What if God, what if God has a plan that, that Pastor Frank, you know, I'm preaching the gospel here, some people get offended, offended some people. We, we had one woman, one woman calling up, she's going to blow me up. And she kept calling up. She kept calling up. She's going to blow me up. She came up and said, say, I'm going to come to your church and blow up your church. I'm going to leave a bomb in your church and blow you up. I had one, one, one guy who was driving by my kid's school. I'm going to talk about me getting cookie. I'm going to talk about the flesh coming out. Driving by me, he's threatening us. Threatening he's going to kill us. And he starts driving. I'm outside picking up my kids, little kids. And all of a sudden, he's driving, he's driving back and forth. What if, God, what if God has a plan that I'm going to die for him? If that's his plan. See, see, Lord, I really want to live. I'm going to preach the gospel, Lord. I'll live you. i got a great marriage. i got a great family. i got a great life. Great life. I want to live. What if the Lord has a different plan? What, 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 if God, what if God calls me to go to the Middle East and be preaching? What if he wants me to go to the Middle East and preach in Mecca? Right? Like Ramadan. Yeah, stand up. Maybe he has a plan like that. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, that we do not serve your gods. I'm not bowing down. I'm not, I'm, I'm not uh, taking tail and running. Nor will we worship uh, the gold image uh, which you have set up. They just submitted to the, the will of God. Of course, they went into the fire, and all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar looked in and he said, I thought there were three, there were four. Who was the fourth? It's the Son of God. And they weren't burning up. In fact, their, their clothes weren't even smoldering. And, and you see, sometimes God delivers us through the fires. 
See, sometimes God will deliver us before we go into the fire. Sometimes God delivers us through the fires. But, but the, there was the plan. Courage. Courage. And you see this throughout the scriptures. Now watch this. I have 600 plus. John 18, verse 3, right in your, in your text. The Judas having received a detachment. The detachment is a word that is translated cohort in some of your Bibles. The word is spiran in the Greek. And what it means is he went and he got 600 Roman soldiers. I just want you to see this. The Pharisees came to arrest Jesus with 600 Roman troops, 600 Roman soldiers, officers from the chief priests, and Pharisees came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons to arrest the humble carpenter from Nazareth. And it's really quite a scene. Here is Jesus who, who, preached, who preached the love of God, who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who gave sight to the blind, who said, who said, love your enemies, love your neighbor, do unto others what you would want them to do unto you. And they come with an army. They come with an army. You, you would have thought that, that he was some type of, of insurrectionist. He would have like a, a rebel a, you know, leading a massive rebel. He's in there with his 11 humble disciples. And they come with 600 Roman soldiers and a bunch of other soldiers and a bunch of other people and they come to arrest him. Here, here's the picture. They've got, they've got lanterns. They've got uh, torches. They've got swords. In the Bible, in another passage, they have clubs. They're, they're, expecting, they're expecting a fight. They're expecting war. And by the way, let me just show you something. The torches and the lanterns, we know that Passover occurs with, with the full moon. And, you know, when you have a full moon, you, you, you could be outside, you, you know, it's pretty easy to see people. But you know what they thought? Guess what they thought? They thought Jesus, when he saw them, guess what they thought he was going to do? They thought he was going to be like Saddam Hussein. Remember Saddam? Where did they find Saddam when, when, they, when they arrested him? He was in a hole hiding. But the, the one who was going to become the king, he wanted to be the next Nebuchadnezzar, who was going to be the king of the world. There's Saddam, he was hiding in a hole. And that's where they thought Jesus was going to be. They thought he was going to be in a hole. Now watch, he wasn't in a hole. Verse 4, Jesus therefore knowing all things that would come upon him. Notice this, where did he go? He didn't go backwards, he went forward. Isn't that great? You talk about courage? Our Lord, our Lord, this, this, this supernatural courage. He didn't go backwards, he went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? <laughs> and they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Notice what he said. I am he. And I guarantee that was that was that was loud. Can you go here? I am he. And Judas, uh, who betrayed him also, stood with them. You talk about courage. And again, look at this courage. He went into the garden and he got on his knees and God gave him a power. The Father gave him a courage. The Father gave him a courage. In fact, it says an angel, an angel came and ministered to him and put a courage in his heart. The early church learned this lesson. The early church that was that was, per, was persecuted, it was persecuted by the Sanhedrin, it was persecuted by the Pharisees, it was persecuted by the Romans. By the way, let me tell you, that early church, those first 200 years, go to the catacombs in Rome, there are 7 million Christians buried in those catacombs. Many of them were martyred. I mean, they were, they were, they were inventing, besides crucifying them, they invented ways to torture Christians and kill them. They'd bring them into the arena and feed them to the lions. They, they take the pastor and they give him a staff and they take the little children and they dress them up in sheep's, sheepskins and they put them in the arena and they let wild dogs, wild bull mastiffs come out on them and rip the kids to shreds while the pastor would try to protect them. Let me tell you, we, we have a debt of gratitude to those who have gone before us and they didn't let their faith, uh, their faith falter. Or the church learned the lesson. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Right? This is the early church being persecuted. Peter and John come back to the church. They're told, you stop telling people about Jesus or we're going to kill you. And when they had prayed, and they came back, and the first thing they did, they had a prayer meeting. And they prayed, and the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And notice what happened. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Right? When they got down on their knees, God gave them courage. And again, I stress this. He who kneels before God can stand before anyone or anything. You want strength in your life? You want courage in your life? Then, then get on your knees before the Lord. Get on your knees privately. Get on your knees corporately. We offer a number of prayer meetings here in the church. And you will find strength to stand before anyone or anything. Okay, number two. 